the number of like devout single women greatly outnumbers the number of devout single men. Like you go to see. Well, there you hear it, boys. You want a free buffet? Go hang out in a church. So says Lauren Chen. That's her chat advice for the day. Every one of you go to church. You go to church. The ratios, my word. Yeah, it'll be a matter of time before you're making babies. You got five trad wives. Get yourself a polygamy going. This is the advice of Lauren Chen verbatim. Uh, so saith. Uh, Lauren Chen. I've talked a bit about how the people on the internet who often talk about uh, men's rights or uh, dude stuff, you know, how to hook up uh, with the cis ladies, things like that, uh, they're all usually the worst people on the planet. And they're teaching a lot of young minds some of the worst things on the planet. That's just kind of, they've kind of cornered that market, you know. And there's not really a lot of people on the left who try to offer uh, better advice. And there's a lot of better advice out there. So I figured we could uh, take a little crack at it today. Uh, we'll be reviewing and correcting uh, this video. Uh, it's called Hookup Culture. Men versus women. Now, I'm going to assume that this is going to be incredibly binary in this discussion, that we're just going to be dealing with cis men and cis women. Uh, I'm going to try my best to be inclusive, but you'll have to forgive me sometimes if, while speaking rapidly, uh, I simply refer to men and women as men and women in this case, uh, and that's not being inclusive. Lauren here. Let's talk about the state of modern dating and how things have gotten just harder for both men and women since we've moved away from marriage and monogamy in favor of, I guess, hookup culture. And just a disclaimer, this video is probably going to make a lot of people mad. I can't imagine feminists liking this, nor will MGTOWs or incels. And heck, just people in general seem to get mad when I talk about dating. I remember the last video I did talking about dating. I forget what specific topic, but this person was like, who would listen to you? You're married, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, as opposed to what, getting your dating advice from unhappy single people? Yeah, that makes sense. But anyway, the question of who has it harder in dating men or- I'm sure she misread that. Uh, I'm sure instead of married, it said racist. Like who would listen to you? <laughs> women is something that comes up on social media a lot. And it's actually a post talking about this that inspired this video. This post was originally shared to Reddit and it's titled, I, a 33 female, helped my brother, a 31 male with dating apps. Now I am depressed. And I'm going to read you some of it. But basically the takeaway here is that this 33 year old female had no idea how hard men have it when it comes to trying to date using dating apps. I'm guessing like Tinder or Bumble. This person writes, I, a 33 female, decided to help my brother, a 31 male, with apps. She says he's been struggling with dating and dating apps for three years now and parents are concerned about his mental health. So I invited him to stay with me for a couple of weeks and told him that I would help him fix his dating app profiles as I was certain that he was doing something wrong. He half-heartedly agreed and brought a second phone that I could use. He is six foot, 165 pounds, and has moderately good looks. He has a stable job, which makes him good money. I set up his account on Tinder and Bumble and completed his profile, description, etc., on his second phone. I also swiped and initially chatted with women who match with the profile. My aim was to show him how to talk to women to keep them interested in him because his main complaint was that they never respond. I thought of sending the first few messages and then letting him continue the conversation. It has been two weeks now. My Okay, so here's my first piece of advice, because this one is often asked. Um, how do I uh, become interesting to the people that I'm trying to have conversations with? Doesn't mean I'm necessarily trying to uh, hook up with them, but just in general, how do I become interesting to them? How do I change myself? How can you change yourselves today using simple tricks? Now, if you read uh, those kind of hookup culture books, you'll probably learn about things like negging and peacocking, right? Peacocking when you try to accentuate certain things so that people notice you in the room, my word. What a funny hat he has. Why does it have a plum on top? Or perhaps nagging, where you walk up to members of the opposite sex and you try to bring them down by talking about how ugly they are. It's like, oh, hi, very nice to meet you. Yeah, nice face, uggo. And they're like, whoa, I'm interested in what you have to say. That's the advice you usually get. Um, my advice would be, rather than trying to create this new persona of yourself where it is, hey, how interesting am I? Why don't you get interested in them? Why don't you ask them questions? People often don't get asked questions. People don't often get an opportunity to talk because other people are just talking over them. If you want to have a conversation with people, it shouldn't be like, hey, do you like magic? Because uh, I can do 20 tricks right now in front of you and things like that. It, it'll come across as strange and utterly bizarre if you do that. But having conversations with other people is usually 
uh, a two-way street. And as you're having conversations with someone else and you're allowing them to tell a little bit of their story, you may find some common things that you both know a lot about, a common interest perhaps, and then you can begin to build upon that common interest. Oh, you also like Pokemon. I happen to like Digimon. Well, we may now speak about said Pokemon and Digimon. Experience has been utter garbage. Nobody wants to have a conversation. I don't quite understand why. Maybe I am doing something wrong. And then the woman goes into describing how different her experience trying to use these apps as a man was compared to her experience using these apps as a woman. Listing some of the things she experienced, she writes that one, very few matches when compared to what women get. He got a few matches on the first couple of days. Post that, it's just a match or two a day. I used to get scores of good matches every day when I went on dating apps for myself, and I was very picky. So as someone who hasn't been single for like five years, which actually reminds me, Liam and I's five year anniversary is coming up. Very exciting. But uh, I actually used to have a Tinder account and I know Tinder has a reputation for being a hookup app. And I think there are a lot of people who use it that way. Uh, but it's not exclusively just that. There are couples now who are married who- What's this pickup line? Has your COVID lockdown been eventful? <laughs> Hey, BB, how's your lockdown going? Yeah, that's true, actually. I don't know what the, the current state of pickup lines are in this uh, this COVID-style era. Um, that's kind of funny, though. Originally met on Tinder, but uh, I will say that, yeah, it's true. As a woman, you get so many more matches than you would as a guy. And actually, I've been on male friends. Wait, what is the subreddit? Female dating strat pros. The best posts and concepts from female dating strategy. Oh, we're in. All right, this one's for the lads. Hey, boys, you ready? Five traits of the HVM, aka the high value male. A high value male makes no less than six figures per year and dedicates no less than 40% of his post tax income towards financing your life. A high value male is there to serve and caretake for his queen. A high value male is at least one to three points better looking than his female. Nice. He is at least six feet and works out with a minimum of three times a week. Men who are under an eight out of ten are considered a low value male with poor genes. Sorry, boys. Evolutions here. A high value male commits without expectation from his woman. He understands any benefit he derives from his relationship is at her discretion and hers only. A high-value male will not watch porn or fantasize about other women. Sick. This is especially true with masturbation. <laughs> so do you only masturbate about one person all the time? <laughs> Men who use their imagination about other women while masturbating are low-value males. Damn it. Damn it. Why did I think of that librarian? I was so close. Sex is a reward for the male and should be treated as both the female or uh, should be treated as such by both the male and the female. Thanks for the reward, sweetie. You're welcome. I didn't enjoy it because women don't enjoy sex, but there's a treat for you. Good to know. Cool. His Tinder accounts and I've seen that they just don't get a lot of matches. In fact, I've literally seen guys swipe right or like whichever accept is on every single dating profile just to see what matches he can get. And then once he already has the matches, then he'll filter them because it's just, it's different odds as a guy. This woman also explains that on her brother's profile, there were hardly any responses from his matches. Women just don't want to have anything to do with him. This was perhaps what affected me the most. I watched in despair as matches just kept expiring. Sometimes they would stop after a few messages and other times they would Yeah, that was great. That's like, it's, it's good. We're doing both sides. I'm, I'm what about is, I mean, this whole thing because we're, uh, we're showing you both uh that side like the opposite of the mra style crowd or like you know the incel style crowd and we also have the fem cell style crowd as well where it's like yes we only want high value males even send a message or apply i have used bumble and tinder myself men don't do this 90 percent of men respond to the first message this is worse than getting a uh, eggplant pick which has happened to me a few times at least the person on the other side wants you even if it is just for sex imagine being ignored like a piece of trash that's what it felt like. 90% of matches never initiated the conversation or responded to the first message. How is he supposed to get a date when there are no responses from the other side? And this is also a really good point. When it comes to dating apps, women really have all of the control. And I know that because I 
I've been in that position. You get so many more matches as a woman. It doesn't really make sense to try to initiate conversations with guys because, I mean, odds are there's already 20 other guys already in your inbox who are pursuing you. And I'm not saying that that's right or that's how it should be or that it is good. I'm just saying that is the reality of trying to meet someone on a dating app. She also Fair explained enough. that from her perspective, there were very poor quality matches. Most women who matched with his profile were nowhere close to his educational qualifications or salary range. In fact, there wasn't even a single match. Okay. If you're older, uh, if you're in the mid range, you want to do online dating, then I recommend probably doing online dating with something other than swiping culture. You want something like OkCupid, okay, I guess, because you want to be able to do all these things. Like, it's, I'm not just looking for a fling. I need to have a very set amount of things. You need to make X amount of money. You need to like this book. You need to do fine. You need to. You need a more diverse profile than someone who's just going to be swiping through and being like, okay, yeah, all right, I like the pictures. Let's see, you're not a Nazi. Cool. All right, here's a DM. Something like that, right? So this is this is going to be a little bit different. Um, in terms of the odds, yes, of course, that, that is, I'm not going to push back on that. And every single one of my friends who's single, who uses those apps on a regular basis, if you are a guy, of course, you will get much less responses, especially on the apps in which the women have to, uh, message you first, say something like Bumble or, or apps like that, that give the power, uh, to the, uh, the women, the cis women in that case. Um, Regardless of all that, I mean, I'm going to move beyond dating apps eventually when we give our uh, our advice here or try to correct some of the, the wrongs. Um, that may be the case. There's also the case, of course, that if you are a woman on these apps, you will have uh, an inordinate amount of harassment, of course. Uh, you're going to get a whole bunch of people like uh, going super hypersexual right out of the gates, people sending you the dick pics, all that kind of stuff is also going to be reality of the situation we find ourselves in. There's this idea that women control sex, uh, which... You know, I'm not going to disargue uh, with that, that it is easier for a woman in today's modern society than it is for a man to just have casual sex on a regular basis. The opposition to that, or I guess maybe I would say the pairing to that, would be the fact that men often are the ones who determine whether or not they want to have relationships, whereas women are the ones who are, are the, like the gatekeepers for sex, for example, and these like, you know, these hyper uh, polarized examples, then men would be the ones who are the ones who are like whether deciding whether or not, well, okay, I'm ready for a relationship, baby. This is the paradigm that we're setting up with this kind of culture, right? With this kind of hookup culture that we're doing. What I would recommend personally if you were to ask me, is to move beyond just dating apps. Most of the friends I have who use exclusively dating apps are usually unhappy. I do have a lot of friends who have great success stories on dating apps. I have been to three of my friends' weddings, and all three of them met on dating apps. I have been to people who, uh, friends who are polyamorous, who have successfully met a couple of their uh, polypool members on dating apps. I'm not saying there are not exceptions to the rule. But there are other ways to meet people, and I know that's weird, it's, it's COVID, you might not have access to all this kind of stuff. Um, the number one way I usually tell people is volunteering. And let me put a caveat to this, okay? Volunteering is great, because you volunteer usually in a big group of people, it's very social, you all have to work together, you're all doing something positive, you usually have a common goal, uh, it's, it's going to be very friendly, and you're all working towards a thing. There's a big problem also in these kind of circles, in activist circles, whatever it is, with there being sexual harassment. So here's the thing. If you meet someone and you have a good conversation with them and then you have multiple conversations with them and you think that there's something going on there, there's nothing wrong with making your intentions known, all right? I, I, I definitely want to push back against people who are like, you must never speak or you must never bring up the fact that you're attracted to someone else. No, you can be like, you know what? I, I just can be honest with you. I'm talking to you. I, I, I like you. I've been vibing with you. Uh, would you have any interest in maybe, you know, doing something outside of this? That's as far as it has to go. doesn't have to be, hey, fuck, nice chits. You know, don't have to get weird. Do not have to get strange. In fact, the the more the more casual and friendly you are, the, like the, the nicer and more calm you are to talk to, like just think of you as a human being, how you want to speak to someone else. Do you want to speak to someone else who is just like, or do you want to speak to someone else who makes you feel comfortable? Like obviously most people will pick the comfortable one. So in the event that the uh, the answer is yes, inshallah, muzzle tov. I, I love is love, love is great, go forth and, and do your things, right? In the event that it's a no, then don't don't uh, don't push it further. That's as far as it needs to go. And guess what? You can move on to whatever the next project may be or the next person you're interested in. That's the other and final piece I'll see in this little rant. 
do not get into this mindset that we've all been programmed into where it's one person, one one person, and that's it. This is my soulmate. I, I have honed in on this person, and this is it. This is my everything. I have to get them. I must win them now, any means necessary. doesn't matter if I'm buying them gifts, or I, I'm writing them letters, or I'm doing their homework, or I'm driving uh, their car for them, or I'm fixing, or I'm giving them money. I will do whatever it takes to win this person over. That is never going to end well. A, love is not love if it's not reciprocal. Uh, all sex should be consensual. All sex. There's no such thing as good and consensual sex. Sex. sex has to be a two-way street. There's multiple people being performing in it. This has to be a, a two-way road. So if the other person has no interest in you, move on to the another person. There's going to be another person who is. Do not do not waste your time on someone who's like, no, I don't have an interest. And also, that'll avoid this other big problem I see in the, the MRA circles and the, the incel circles about, well, what about the friend zone? I've been friend zoned again. I keep getting friend zoned and friend zoned. Fine. That's not a two-way street. A friend zone is the same example. If you are getting friend zoned, that's someone who is fine with the fact that you might have a relationship that is only one way. They're okay with that, and they're okay with it because they still get stuff from it. That's not cool either. Do not do not allow yourself to be friend zoned on the other end. If you are interested in a person romantically, they're not interested in you, and it's too hard for you to just be friends. End it. That's it. You don't have to. You don't have to associate with that person anymore. That'll save everyone a lot of a lot of stress, a lot of a lot of horrible times. All right. It's never going to end well. There's very few examples. Like, of course, you see the things on TV where it's like, well, you know, I was just her best friend for like 12 years, and then eventually I got her. And like, yeah, he did. He wore me down. That that's not how the world really works. You know, that more often than not, it's going to make most of you super upset. Ah. Uh, um. New rule for serfdom, if any couples meet through the serfs, you automatically get an invite to the wedding. Yeah, but what happens if, like, this channel continues to blow up? It's going to be one day. It's like, Lance, you have 500 wedding invitations this year. You have to show up to all of them. August L. Vetti, thank you very much for subscribing with uh, Prime. That's my advice. Who initiated a conversation that I would say matched his salary and education level. I never had this problem on dating apps. There do straight people not date their friends? Oh, they do. Straight people absolutely uh, date their friends. It happens. I've hooked up with friends. I'll tell you this, though. As someone who's hooked up with friends, it will forever change your friendship. If you fuck someone else who you're close friends with, that is always just going to be a part of your relationship from then on out. You're always going to know that person's O face. You're always going to know that what that person's like sexually. And yes, it can be totally fine. You can totally like walk away from it afterwards and it's totally fine. But that's always just going to be one added dynamic to that friendship that wasn't there before. I have like amazing platonic friendships uh, with cis women. Some of my best friends are cis women. I've never hooked up with them. They've never hooked up with me. And it's never been a thing. Like that's, by the way, that's also a thing. I, I, I will push back in the hardest possible sense against people being like there's no such thing as like you know cis people who are both heterosexual from the opposite sex uh, you know not wanting to fuck each other at some point you know i was like no that's that's utter bullshit you can be friends with people like dudes you can be friends with women cis dudes you can be friends with cis women it's a thing it's totally fine do not worry you know there are loads of men who are either equal or better than me in salary and education. I met my current boyfriend on Bumble and he makes as much as I do. Okay, so in the comments uh, of this post, I did see some people saying that this is clearly a fake uh, fake post. It's not real. But this right here is how I know that it was a woman writing this because... Uh, frankly, men would not care to qualify their matches based on income and education. Like that's something that women look for in prospective partners, but men on average, I'm not saying that men don't care at all, but men in general are less preoccupied with how much his girlfriend is making or what her education level is. And we're going to be talking more about how dating culture and hookup culture has really hurt men, but also women. First, though, I want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Noble Gold. Noble gold it does look a lot more just, you know, like a regular spread. Studies also show that women are more likely to be having sex nowadays than men, which means that sexual intimacy is being concentrated uh, amongst a smaller number of males. And all of that is pretty bad news for honestly the majority of guys out there. And even though it's always been true that women are more likely to reproduce than men, uh, you have more female ancestors than male ancestors, for example, I think this. I just want to quickly push up against this because I recently posted that video by Jordan Peterson. Um, maybe I'll play it because it's only a minute long. But he is a very big proponent of this as it's like in the pipeline to incel that exists. You'll see a lot of people saying, and it's not factually incorrect that you have twice as many female ancestors as you have male ancestors. Where the lie comes in is this idea that 
by doing so, by this uh, stat being realistic, or sorry, by the stat being true, that happens to imply that women have traditionally been the ones who have shaped society. As in, we are told this lie of patriarchy, but for generations, it's the women who were consistently the ones who were giving birth and all that. No, what this is telling you is that we've lived in a hyper-patriarchal society, especially if you're talking about the West for such a long time, that a very small amount of men were the ones who were mating with a larger pool of women. So there would be, yes, a smaller pool of guys, most likely they had nobility, they had higher class, uh, they had harems, whatever you want to call it, and that's been the way society has worked for a while in these nation-state style of structures. It does not mean that women have uh, choose, like chosen to shape society in the way it is today, as like uh, Jordan Peterson likes to play it. The point of mandatory vaccination is to identify the sincere Christians in the ranks, the free thinkers, the men with high testosterone levels. The unknown is that which surrounds the known. It's unexplored territory. It's usually represented as female. <clears throat> it's the unknown that manifests the new. Every woman has one child. Half the men have two and the other half have zero. And so how the fact that we have these massive brains is very likely a consequence of a positive feedback loop in sexual selection. You know, and, and women have paid a pretty big price for that because your hips are basically so wide that you can barely run. <clears throat> you really got to take care of those creatures. And so you're twice as likely to be a failure if you're a man than you are if you're a woman in that you have twice as many female ancestors as male ancestors. Nature is that which selects. Half the men have two and the other half have zero. And so, end of problem. Just so you know, it's kind of kind of MRA style stuff. Oh, I, I like I agree with you in chat. Whoever said that? Uh, how many people uh, does Genghis Khan account for that statistic? I mean, th that apparently it's true. Like everyone has because Genghis Khan fucked. Genghis Khan fucked so much was just and between him and the pillaging and the raping and all that stuff fucked so many women gave birth to so many offspring that there's like there's little Genghis Khan in all of us. This problem has been exacerbated due to hookup culture. I mean, think about it. If you're, for example, an average looking guy or heck, even less than average looking, traditionally, historically, you could have still attracted a mate by being a really good provider or by just being someone kind who they want to spend time with if we're, you know, in the past where you're lucky enough to actually. The weird thing about all this, though, is that like in the old days when you met people in person, when people still went to bars or clubs or whatever, clubs or whatever you want to say. The first things that you talk about, that like it's not you don't have an initial conversation with someone, and they're like, "So, uh, what's your le uh, yearly income?" Okay, cool, and uh, I I'll need to know uh, what your job is. Where do you see your advancement in five years or growth? You would most likely just have a conversation. You try to get to know the other person. Very for a lot. Nowadays, with hookup culture, though, that's pretty irrelevant. Hookup culture doesn't really reward being a stable provider or being kind. And I would even say, to an extent, it doesn't even necessarily reward having a stable job. Like, if you're a woman and you're looking Resumers for a long-term well partner, then yes, Fair enough. someone hey, who is making consistent... Zoomers, y'all, I mean, you gotta go fast. It's the Sonic generation now, right? So I understand. Okay, things are different. Now, this is old-timey Lance trying to give all of you chat advice, but I don't have any. Like $60,000 a year, that's really, really appealing. That's really attractive. But if you're really just in it for a night or, you know, a week or two, then you probably, if you care about wealth, are going to be going for someone super wealthy who's able to shower you in luxuries during that short time versus someone who can just provide long-term comfort and like an upper middle class living. And it's funny because nowadays I feel like incels are correctly very, very critical of hookup culture. Uh, but MGTOWs, interestingly enough, seem to be more skeptical of even just marriage in general. And I get that nowadays the court system is totally biased against men. I am not going to argue with that because I don't really think it's arguable at this point. But still, instead of trying to return to tradition and, you know, do away with things like no-fault divorce and unfair court systems, I feel like Sony MGTOWs have decided to just... What does this have to do with dating? <laughs> Isn't this about hookup culture? <laughs> now I'm going to talk about the disproportionate uh, rates uh, of child, uh, you know, uh, separation for, between men and women. Go their own way, which 
I mean, obviously, it's up to them. They can do as they please. But if you are someone who kind of... <laughs> I, th- I think she's kind of jumping the gun. I mean, you got to get to the baby making first before you can get custody battles going down, you know? did want a relationship and you're only eschewing one just because of, like, political backlash. It doesn't really sound like a good long-term solution to me personally. So at this point, you might be thinking, all right, so hookup culture clearly isn't good for most men. So obviously it just must be benefiting women. And I think it's very fair to say that hookup culture ultimately has been driven by women. Uh, Saragon of Akkad, Carl Benjamin, who uh, hosts the Lotus Eaters podcast, he often says that women are the gatekeepers of sex, but men are the gatekeepers of... Wait, let's, let's go back to that drop up culture ultimately has been driven by women uh saragon of akkad carl ben- <laughs> i kind of just want to clip that and end it right there <laughs> saragon has dropped it yes we all heard this conversation with destiny sex. but before you start thinking that things are all unicorns and roses for women in the 2021 dating scene uh that simply is not the case first off if you are a woman who doesn't just want uh casual sex and hookups and you are lance had the sargon take no that's the take that's been going around for a while i've watched that entire thing with sargon and, and, and destiny but he's not the one to invent that that's ridiculous that's like to coin that on sargon to say that women have had a monopoly on uh the determining whether or not people have sex, whereas men have had a monopoly on relationships. That's like fucking talking about uh, sexual relationships in the modern era 101. Are looking for a serious relationship? Dating is very hard in 2021. I think dating, if you want marriage and children, is hard for people in general. But I would say, yeah, it still is harder for women because like Carl said. Everything aside, though, like... I'm guessing if you're a Zoomer, if I want to put myself back in my old when I was a Zoomer mindset, uh, I was not thinking about uh, marriage and children. That was not my primary concern. Like, I, w- I would just be happy to meet someone who I liked and liked me. That that would have been enough. You know, that that in and of itself would have been the perfect uh, package. If things have changed, uh, if everyone has now become hyper focused on, uh, you know, what, what is your 401k? Uh, how much investments do you have? What's your credit score? Can I figure that out at the very start of this before we actually like try anything out? Well, then uh, the paradigm has changed, unfortunately. And there's not like there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of advice I can give everybody in that regard. What I will tell you, though, is just the same thing. I think people are overcomplicating these issues, especially like the hookup culture stuff, all of that. The idea of like, OK, here's the list of things you need to do. Here's the list of techniques. We will teach you how to hack the game. I'm going to show you how to hook up with all the femoids. You're going to get them all. You're going to get laid a thousand times a day. Your penis is going to break off. It's your ultimate fantasy. I know this is what every man dreams of, right? All that kind of stuff, the overcomplication of it, when really when it comes down to it, it's a very basic concept. If you think think of what you've been like in social scenarios when you're talking to other human beings. What is it like to talk to someone who's fidgeting, who's constantly awkward looking around and you have to force the conversation because they only say like three or four words? That's terrible. That's the polar, you know, example, like the, sorry, the extreme example, the hyperbolic example. Whereas when you have conversations with people who make you feel comfortable, who are engaging, who are nice to talk to, and all of you know how to do that. Every single one of you has had a conversation uh, with another person who's either a friend, a family member or something where it's been able to go on beyond like four or five words, right? What I'm saying is that that idea, that principle, that will get you a lot further in trying to meet people than any of this fucking nagging, uh, bring a, a hot friend to be able to bring her down, make sure you peacock, learn a magic trick, all of that nonstop bullshit. And on the other end of the thing with the MRA stuff where it's like, oh, like everything is unfair, we have to treat women like sex objects, blah, blah, blah. That has the opposite, sorry, that has the negative effect of kind of instilling in your mind that your only possible uh, partners have to be the Stacys, like only look out for, you must look for the hottest chick in the room. You must then like, you know, get them to notice you. You have to nag them because obviously you, that's part of the process. You then have to do this and that and this. Like, I would say widen your gaze, widen your gaze. Like, uh, do not hyper focus on just this one person. Do not ever hyper focus. Cause like, that is a very, like beyond the fact that you're like, I'm going for the hot chick or whatever. That is a very Disney mentality. Just to be like, everyone has a soulmate, your soulmate, once you found them, you have to make them fall in love with you. And once they fall in love with you through these techniques, which we will teach you, then uh, you have won, you have done part five of whatever it is to succeed in this game called capitalism, right? That whole idea is ridiculous, like genuinely. It, it was it was it, the bane of me trying to uh, to meet people when I was younger was the idea that I was like, oh, I, I, I love this person, this one person, it has to be them, right? No, that's ridiculous. Like. 
go meet multiple people. Go go have conversations with multiple people. It will be very self-evident after a while if someone else also enjoys hanging out with you. They might just enjoy hanging out with you because they enjoy hanging out with you as a person. There's nothing sexual going on there. They could be asexual towards you. You have no idea, right? Any of that. But you can always make your intentions known. And if they are uh, rejected and you have no interest in a friendship, then move on. It's there's there's billions of other options is kind of the thing says men are the gatekeepers of relationships and it seems like men aren't really interested in relationships anymore it's been a while since i was on the dating market but i still remember how hard it was as someone who did just want to get married settle down and have kids and kind of have the traditional picket fence lifestyle i can't even begin to describe how many guys i would talk to who like on the first yeah, yeah, day or very shortly would say like yeah i don't really believe in marriage no i don't want kids and it's like I mean, thank you uh, <laughs> for not wasting my time, I suppose. But that is hard for women. And I know so many women who do just, you know, want to get married, but there aren't really any prospective suitors. And this is especially true in faith communities, um, you know, for a lot of churches. And I'm sure the same is probably true, uh, you know, in Muslim communities and Jewish communities, different faith <laughs> communities. The number of like devout single women greatly outnumbers the number of devout single men. Like you go to. Sing well, there you hear it, boys. You want a free buffet? Go hang out in a church. So says Lauren Chen. That's her chat advice for the day. Every one of you go to church. You go to church. The ratios, my word. Yeah, it'll be a matter of time before you're making babies. You got five trad wives. Get yourself a polygamy going. This is the advice of Lauren Chen verbatim. Uh, so saith uh, Lauren Chen. Hear me out. What about the strategy? Have sex with a bunch of different men and eventually have a conversation with one of them and start having a relationship with them. I mean, that works too. Uh, if you if you have uh, consensual sex and access to that and enjoy it, fantastic. Then uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Chico's ears flipped. Be careful with that when he's outside because it can give him ear infections from cold or water coming in. Gotcha. He's rarely uh, flipped when he's outside because he shakes his head a lot. So it's it's usually pretty good. Move to Utah. Well, there's chat advice. That's the chat advice you never thought you'd hear, right? Hey. Everybody, are you looking to get your numbers up? Boys, how many notches you got on that belt? Move to Utah. You can soak. Get down to Utah. All the soaking you could ever want, all right? It's just a soaking smorgasbord right now. Everyone's soaking. All the kids are doing it. It's this fucking soaking capital of the world. Get down there. Get your soak on, all right? It's a fucking water park. Slip and slide. Call it what you will. Get out there and soak. Oh, and please, if you're going to be soaking, wear a condom. Wrap it up, all right? Do not have unprotected soakage. It could hurt you. Does not matter what people say. Hey, do, do, you, do you like movies? Do, do, you, like, do you like surfs? Do, do you want? Do you want? Do you want movies and surf, surfs? Watching the movies, so then come over to the new channels. It's the surfs the cinema. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Can you do the thing? You know that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives. Also, if you happen to have a Facebook account, um, can you can you delete it? Like just just delete it. You should probably delete your Facebook account because it's just. It's not a great company, but hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just going to be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you got to do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks, everybody. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, may you shower us mortals with gifts from the heaven. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are your humble jesters, clowning around for your amusement. To our lord, Trevor R. and Alexander Thaler, we give you our thanks for this meager land for us to toil our seed. To our knights of the round table, Hegbard Sealine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariana McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Ants are still running the world, Coulter Smith, Tom Grow, Val9000, Jenna Tal, Dark Puppy, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, The Tim Caucus, Multi Mondi, Trevor Janice, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, 
Chronic de Hemphog, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Josh Mickelson, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our glasses and we salute you, our comrades. <laughs>